Let's talk about the settings you need to change to get your app to compile and so that it can be published to the Play Store as well. Begin by going to Edit in your project, and then Project Settings, and then Player. And by default, you probably have this left option here selected in the inspector. You'll want to change it over to the Android one. Your settings might look a little different because I was playing around with this earlier or depending on your project name they might vary as well but I will go ahead and cover it and you'll have to change along the way so first in the top go ahead and fill out your company name and your game name uh, I just have kind of a generic one it's not going to be the actual name of my game and let's start on the resolution and presentation tab right here so the first option you have is orientations Auto rotation will change depending on which way the device is held. So if you want it to flip freely, you'll leave this on auto rotation. Uh, portrait is if you're holding the phone upright. Portrait upside down is if you had it flipped the other way. And this would force the display into that uh, that behavior or orientation. Landscape left is if you have the top of the phone facing to your right. So if you're holding your phone upright and you rotate it 90 degrees, that would be landscape left and landscape right would just be the opposite. Disable depth and stencil can sometimes be used with 2D games but it all depends on your shaders. If you're not that familiar with shaders leave this option unchecked. As far as loading indicator there is some API calls you can make which shows a uh, built-in loader for example, if you're going between scenes and you think it might take a while, you can call the code to show the loader and it will actually animate as you're changing between scenes. The indicator is just whichever one you want to show while that's occurring. I just click the icon settings. These are pretty self-explanatory. You will want to use the override for Android option just so you can have different icons for different resolutions. What I recommend is generally making the largest icon and then just scaling it down using your photo editing software. Now moving on to the splash image settings. These are the images that you see when you first start the app up. You do have options for a virtual reality one as well. And if you want to preview your changes at any time, you can just hit the preview button and it'll show you what it looks like. I should probably change my aspect here. The animation is just how the Made with Unity appears. Uh, some of them are just fading out. The dolly kind of pulses in and out. And then you have the custom one where you can adjust how much it zooms in, how much the background zooms in, various things like that. As far as these two settings right here, the bottom one, sequential, will put your, uh, your logos in order. So the Unity logo is always going to be first. You can't control that unless you have the pro version of Unity. So I'm going to add an option right here by clicking the plus button. And I'm just going to choose a random image for my game. And now I will hit preview to show you what it does. So you can see it shows them in order. I'm going to go ahead and remove my image. I'm going to change this to Unity logo below. And if I hit preview, it will just show the Unity logo in the center, but if I have another image like before, it will actually put the logo below it. The overlay opacity is supposed to improve the strength of the logo, but I haven't actually noticed any difference in that whenever I set a logo and change a slider. The background image is what is used as the background uh, for your logos, so I'll just set a random one and hit preview to show you. The alternate portrait image is just if you want to have a landscape background as well a portrait background. I couldn't find any information on the static splash image. It might be a pro only feature. Uh, whenever I set the value though, nothing seems to happen. So that one, I'm not quite sure. If you find out, let me know. Okay, going into other settings, there is a lot here. I'm not going to cover all of it only the uh, only the important stuff really so first you have multi-threaded rendering this will improve performance however it does not work on all devices there's also been reports 
of crashes on some pretty popular devices with this enabled. So unless you're able to test thoroughly on multiple devices, I would probably leave that unchecked. An important line is the package name. It shows com.yourcompany.packageName. So what this might look like is com.firstgeargames and the name of your app dot turn jump. And this is very important for when you're publishing. The setting has to be set. The version is the version code which users will see whenever they look it up or look at the uh, app information. And the bundle version code is not seen, but generally it, it coincides with the actual version number. The bundle version is what Google Play checks to see if there's an update. So if someone's on bundle version 1 and you just pushed bundle version 2, Google Play will notify the user that there is an update. Make sure when you have your settings set to what you want, you're also saving with uh, your shortcut or through file save. If you just change them and try to compile it, it will not use the new settings. So the minimum API level is the lowest supported operating system for Android that you want your app to be able to run on. Obviously you want to target more devices, so if you're capable of targeting the lower end ones as well, keep this on the lowest possible setting. Target API level should always be at automatic highest. Um, very rarely would you ever want to set it specifically. I haven't run into any instances where that's the case. Mute other audio sources will mute background sounds. Uh, so if you have like a music game for example, the, this might be a good option to check. The install location is where the app installs on the, on the uh, device. External would be install it to the SD card. Force internal would be it to install to the internal memory or storage of the device. Now just because you use prefer external does not mean that the app will install to external. It all depends on the device. So then you have your internet access. If your app absolutely needs internet access, you can put required. Otherwise you can leave it on auto and it will try to detect. The write permission basically wherever the app can write to. Uh, if you want it to be able to write to the external, you'll have to check the external SD card. Otherwise, you can keep it as internal. If you change it to external, there is a good chance that an extra permission will go onto your app saying that it's requesting read write to the SD card. Android TV compatibility just means that it can run on the Android TV operating system. Android game is to be checked if you are making a game and not a regular app. That's all that means. Going down a little bit, we have preloaded assets. If you have some assets that are in your resources folder uh, that might take a while to load, that might make the game a little laggy, you'd want to put them in the preloaded assets. And you can just change the size and then you can drop in the prefabs. The keep loaded shaders alive is very similar. Uh, basically whenever your game launches for the first time it will compile the shaders kind of in the background and this will, if checked, will store those so that they load quicker the next time. Stripping level is how much unnecessary code you want to remove. Um, sometimes if you have a big game you might want to use this but generally I leave it at disabled so nothing accidentally gets stripped out which does happen on occasion and if you do strip even using the most aggressive method which is this one right here it at most takes off a couple KB maybe a hundred KB at most so generally I just leave it at disable okay moving down to publisher settings I believe by default it has use existing key store selected if you already have a key store then you probably already know what you're doing here uh, but if not, you want to create a new key store. I'm just going to make a temporary one. So you have to type in a password twice. And you're going to hit Browse Key Store. And this is going to choose where to save your key store at. And I'm just going to save it right on my desktop. And then you need a key alias. So a key store basically holds a bunch of key aliases, or just one. Think of a key alias as a chapter in a book, and the key store is the book itself. If you uh, want to add a chapter, you'll do create new key, 
you're going to fill out all this information. So the alias name is just going to be how you want it to be seen um, in this list, for example. And there are other ways to access the key aliases outside of Unity, but um, that's through command tools and various things which I'm not really going to go into depth to. So for the alias, I'm just going to put first gear game because I'm going to use this for all my games. I'm going to set another password, and it does not have to be the same as a key store password. It can actually be different. Confirming password. How long this is good for? 50 years. That seems pretty pretty generous. Uh, I'm going to enter my first and last name. going to fill out this stuff here I don't actually remember what state it took place in if you know who John Diggles is so once you have this all filled out hit create key and it will seemingly freeze for a moment just give it a second okay um, so you'll notice that it went from create a new key store to use existing key store. That's just fine. But in your alias, you have to choose the one you just made. And you will want to enter the password for it as well. And go ahead and save your settings. And the idea of having uh, multiple aliases in one key store is, let's say, if you do want to publish different games under different aliases, you can add a bunch of them to the same key store and you can just use that one key store for all your apps and just change the alias easily in most cases though you're probably only going to be using one alias now the key store is extremely important do not lose your key store make multiple backups of it uh, if you ever lose your key store you cannot push any more updates to that app so absolutely do not lose it okay now I'm gonna go ahead and do a test build I'm going to go to File, Build Settings. And if you don't have your main scene added already, go ahead and do so. Select Android. Since we filled everything out, this is not going to be a development build, so make sure that this is not checked. And then go ahead and hit Build. And uh, you can set your build folder to wherever you want. You might get this message. You can update your Android SDK if you want. I'm not going to go into details on how to do that right now. Otherwise, you can just use highest installed. You might get the pop-up twice as I did. Shouldn't take too long. It's not a very big game. Also along the way, uh, if you get any errors, the first thing I would recommend is making sure you, uh, well first check the errors actually, and, and if they tell you that there's a setting error, fix that setting. If you get kind of a generic error, something about the manifest or uh, build numbers don't match up or anything like that, I first recommend making sure your SDK is a high enough version. So perhaps uh, try to update the SDK next time and if that doesn't work, try to update the Java Development Kit, also known as the JDK. Those will generally resolve any issues you have that are unrelated to the player settings. And that should be all you have to do. You can go ahead and publish your app to the Google Play Store and begin testing if you like.